Welcome everybody to the Monday, June 20th joint meeting of the Conway Select Board and Conway Finance Committee. Um, call the meeting to order. And first item on the agenda, the minutes of June 5th, 2023. Good, good Pete. That look good to me. It did look good. Yep. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Uh, Is Phil speaking? It seems like the sound went out. Ah, I will speak louder. <laughs> Sorry. I'm mumbling probably. Can you um, hear there me? we go, uh, I, I think. Uh, yes, yes. yes. D due to the routine nature of exactly what we're doing, the, the loss of enthusiasm is Just look at the owl. noticeable. Yeah. <laughs> um, th yes. Um, okay, so second, we have, we have three warrants that I'm going to move to approve. One that we're still having questions about. We'll see. Um, but there's uh, accounts payable warrant of $323,016.66. That was almost all retirement expenses. Payroll warrant, the amount of $124,000. Um, payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $30,713.29, although the agenda does list the, an incorrect number. Um, I'm gonna move to approve those three. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There is another accounts payable warrant, which we're still having questions answered as we speak, so we'll get to that. Um, and then the rest, we, I'm going to just um, skip over a little bit, but since we have um, um, from FERCOG, the, 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 the wonderful representative from FERCOG um, who's here, let us, <coughs> let's, uh, oh, here's Roy. Oh, let's, let's, let's take care of the FERCOG matter, which is the RFP assistance. Mm -hmm. Yes. So discuss and sign the memorandum of understanding with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments for RFP assistance. What, what okay. wor wonderful words of wisdom do you have for us? Um, so this is pretty much a continuation of what we're already helping out the town with to get you back in compliance with the Green Communities Program. So it's a regional energy planning assistance grant from the Department of Energy. Um, and basically the, the MOU says that we'll provide the assistance at no cost to the town. We'll, we'll be paid by the DOER. Um, yeah, so it's at no cost to Conway. Um, Magic and words. Here's MOU. The two tasks that I put down are to help with your annual report for the next. It's a two-year contract, so it'll help with two annual reports, and then I'll request funds for one competitive grant application. Hopefully, we can get you back in good standing and then apply for a grant. Um, so that's what this is for. Do you have any questions? Um, questions is uh, so when when this is done we are we going to be in compliance as soon as we can submit your annual report dating back to fiscal year 2018 yes and um i know veronique is working on getting the gas information so yeah i know that's coming so we'll submit that and then this funding will allow us to keep going until 2025. cool cool Wow, thank you, Allison. That sounds that's that, amazing. That sounds good. That's that's a no cost to the town. No cost to the no town. Cost. And, and, <laughs> that's really the big and, well the big plus being thing. in compliance versus versus our normal sort of natural state of out of compliance. So that's like yeah. well, not only that, that they're helping us catch up from five years of non compliance. Yeah. yeah. And going forward, I think. We're going Sorry, to the sound went out again. Oh, can um, so I was just saying that the fur cogs help. Like you can't hear us. Ah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it keeps on going in and out. Huh. Hmm. I'm just going to test it again. There you go. Oh, you, you can hear me? Yes. Hmm. Okay, okay, good, because the thing said that okay. I wasn't... Okay. So anyway, yeah, I was just saying that um, it's been so wonderful that you guys are getting us back in compliance from five years of being out of compliance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Which I'll note, just for the record, that that predates by quite a bit Veronique's term of service for the town. So oh, yeah, it's nobody's she inherited, fault. She, she inherited. Yeah, no, one, no one's fault. It's yes, yes, fault. but I'll just note that, just for the, you know, just in case anybody's wondering. 
whose fault it is. Um, so, all right. So, Allison, thank you so much. And um, I'm going to make a motion that we sign the thing. Uh, today being June. Uh, this is the original. And I'll date it June 20th. Okay, uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right, perfect. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Allison. Thank you so much. Yep. Good night. Good night. Can anybody hear us okay? Can anybody hear us okay? Roy's doing the old sign treatment. Right yeah, yeah I, uh, this is Roy. Can you hear me? Wow. Oh, Roy. <laughs> okay, you're on twice. That's why I was confused. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. <laughs> So if it's okay with 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 both of you, we'll go we'll go to the joint meeting to yeah. the finance. Yeah. Sure. Um, I make a motion to call the finance committee uh, finance committee meeting in order, jointly with the honorable select board. Huh? <laughs> Second. All right. All in favor. Aye. Can you hear? Can I hear an aye from you, Roy? To, Call the meeting. Yeah. Can finance you go through all you need. It's okay. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> you got three. That's two good. That's true. Oh, I can see him too. Right. There he is. <laughs> Did you hear that, Roy? They called the meeting to order. Yeah, it's great. Okay. <laughs> it's good. It's a good thing. All right. So first up is the end of year line to line transfer request. And for that we have. The Honorable Ron Sweet of the Highway Department. Want to tell us why we're doing this, Ron? Which for, one you for gravel materials, twenty-five grand. Oh, um. yes. The uh, um, payroll because we've been short. We would like to transfer that so that I could buy materials, gravel materials, before the end of the year to make up for not having the help. It works. Have the material. And just to restate, you bought less material this year because of the price increase on the gravel, right? Correct. And does this get you caught up to roughly the same amount as last year? No. No. But closer? We're, we're probably um, 2,000 yards short, even with this money. Mm. I think last year we did 50,000, didn't we? Yes. Mm. 50,000 yards? No, fifty thousand oh, dollars. Oh, yeah, line to line. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah, so we actually it worked out well last year because of the year end. I was able to buy more than we normally do in a year. Um, last year it was eighteen dollars a yard. This year it's twenty nine twenty five, and the year coming up is thirty or four dollars a yard. Thirty four. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and is that and that's after the gravel pit in Sunderland's been sold? Is what it's still going? I mean, isn't that where all the gravel in the area comes from? Is the, that gravel pit? Actually, this gravel comes from Winchester, New Hampshire. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a gravel bank in Sunderland, but um, it doesn't meet our needs for our gravel roads. We do use some of their material, but when we're putting it on our roads, we the type of gravel is Winchester's is way more preferred. Right. It's more of a crushed stone than it is <coughs> sand and stone. Right. Um. Anybody have any other questions about? No, 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 okay. no questions. Are they good with that? With the twenty-five thousand dollars gravel from payroll to gravel. And that one, those are just finance committee. Those two reserve yeah. fund transfers, right? Yeah. To make a motion now to uh, devote the line to line. I make a motion to 
vote for the line to line transfer of $25,000 from line number 422-5100 to 422-5400. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Roy. Aye. Good. Oh, good. We have agreed. Aye. Same motion for the select board. Um, I move that we make the transfer that Alan just um, articulated. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's coming your way, the one that you got assigned. Oh, oh, okay. Well, the one that's time to put it. Okay. Yeah. Right. 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 We did a speech one. Well, we, have we don't. That's the only one we signed. Okay. The other one is the reserve fund is. That's the, that is just that's, that's just the finance committee flexing their authority. You have, you have permission to write your name on this? I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, which, which one, are, we just voted on the 25,000, but Correct, what are we yes. doing now? Oh, no, yeah. still, but I just want to, I'm writing your name here on the, uh, on the transfer request form itself, there has to be a hard copy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can sign my name, or I'll okay. come in and sign it tomorrow if you want. Okay, whatever, thank you. That's fine. Thank you. As long as it's recorded, we have it okay. on record. Okay. Want to go with the next one? Okay. Yeah. So, I make a motion that we approve the request of transferring seven thousand five hundred dollars from the reserve fund to account number four twenty two fifty four hundred for the purpose of tree removal on Wakey Road. There is no current budget for this request. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Select board wants to. No. Zero, Zero comments. Your Bailey with. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Next one the uh, Highway Winter Fund. There's a deficit in overtime, so we make a request to transfer $2,462.98 to Highway Winter Budget Line Item 423-5100. I make a motion to approve the transfer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Who are you in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but question for, uh, for Veronique, I guess. Um, what what was the starting balance in the reserve fund? Um, well, we're working on FY 23s. I don't think we've expended any, anything yet. Um, maybe we did earlier. Our, our starting okay. balance is forty thousand, so we had plenty to cover. Oh, okay. So we're going to be uh, putting back like thirty thousand, going into free cash. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And that does it. All right. And then you guys need to vote on the line to line. You guys oh, we did. Erica made the motion. Second. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were doing the 25,000. That was the line to line. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Um, so we're, we're done, right? We are done. I make a motion to adjourn <laughs> the finance committee. Well, I'm going to select that one. I'll vote in second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Select board just start. Okay. Thank Take you. care, everybody. Thank, Thank all you. of you. Thank yes. you, Roy. All right. Uh, Bye. So, just to let you know, the warrant here, how my name was written down. It's launched higher. No, I'm good. That's what that was. <laughs> Sorry. I have no idea why that was written <laughs> All right, um, take care. It so, yeah. seems, I mean, seeing how I've already made two mistakes tonight, it just seems to be the 
So uh, just going back to the earlier item about the warrants, there was the one accounts payable warrant that we did not vote to approve. That was in the amount, total amount of $98,738.72. That, and the reason is because upon examination, there was a list listing in the schedule of payments um, for an $8,000 payment to the Lodge of Spruce Peak, which is a ski resort in Stowe, Vermont. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was under the general fund, for, it was under highway expenses. So that seemed to be a questionable expense. But upon further examination, that was a misprint typo and that the $8,000 was to Lodge Tire Company <laughs> uh, for tires for the, which vehicles? One of the loaders. One of the loaders. So, um, so with that, with that mistake being clarified and corrected, um, I'm going to move to approve that warrant, total warrant, in the amount of ninety-eight thousand seven hundred thirty-eight dollars and seventy-two cents. I'll second, and thank you for your eagle eye. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Is that, is that Devlin by any chance on the line? No. She might not have heard Devlin, is that you? That's a weird name. Yeah, that is you. We don't know who that is, do we? I don't know. <coughs> Hello? It's definitely not our phone number. No. <laughs> no. All right, carry on. <coughs> um, so wh while Ron is here, we have a couple other highway-related items on the agenda. One is Corey Skinner and the other is uh, Jameson LaValle. Ron, you want to tell us? Okay, Corey was a full-time employee that because of from one of what he, he resigned two weeks ago and because he couldn't afford to stay working with us. But he is there's no problems with him other than the money issue, so he had to go back and do other things. But he would like to stay on as a temporary fill-in when we need him um, throughout the summer and maybe through the winter. Um, and it would be a big help to the highway department to have somebody that can once in a while work, I guess. Um, Does he have a CDL? Yes. Yes, he has CDL and a posters license. He's very well qualified. He's a, been an awesome worker. We really enjoyed working with him. And, um, he gets the things done that need to get done. He's very happy. All right. And Jameson LaValle from Hatfield, I thought I saw. Yes, he's a part of this Massachusetts pre-apprenticeship and vocational school training program. It's a program where they take high school kids that are in trade schools and place them for employment for the summer. The first part of the project is for 160 hours. Um, if we like what we get from him, they will extend the program for another 160 hours. And then he, depending on our review in the end, if it's favorable, they'll offer him a scholarship for CDL training and oyster license, I believe, is part of the program to prep him to become a DPW worker. He's a, he just finished his junior year, so he's got a senior year. There is the potential of doing a work, uh, excuse me, a work program, which is every other week um, through the text. I mean, the uh, he goes to Smith School, so there is a possibility that we could hire him in the odd weeks. But this program is paid um, 
they pay up to $15 an hour, reimburse us up to $15 an hour. Um, I put in a proposal to hire him through this program at $15 an hour. We have to pay everything above the 50, whatever the employer has, um, like withholding and all that. We pay for that, but um, the state will pay us, reimburse us back to $15 an hour for the hours work. So that's a lot of paperwork for you. Yeah, but it's kind of free labor. Yeah. Um, and Is that one of those things that you miss, like one report, they, like, they don't pay, they don't reimburse? I don't think so. Um, I, I don't believe that that's just, it's that um, type of a thing. Um, they're just looking, they're, they're, they set this program up because most every municipality in Massachusetts is having a problem with funding help and they're trying to encourage high school students to maybe make a career out of DPW. Does he currently have a driver's license? He has a driver's license. And he can get to work by himself without yes, like, yeah. parental assistance? Yes. He's right. actually pretty far ahead in his certifications. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's pretty, it's pretty yeah. impressive yeah. actually for yeah. a high school kid. Yeah, that's not what my resume looked like when I was in we, can, we can't like we can't in advance like have him make him sign something that promises to work for the town for like five years and then <laughs> yes whatever. Like because nice. I'd be all for that. <laughs> Indentured servitude. He's 17 years old. I don't think that he's willing to make a fight. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, Anybody have any other questions about either two of these? Good, good ideas on both counts. Yeah. So I'll move to uh, approve Corey, Sticker, uh, Corey Skinner's um, <clears throat> employment as a temporary part-time employee and Jameson LaValle's uh, as a part-time employee of uh, um, unknown duration oh, um, through the, through the uh, state program for uh, tech, for the tech kids. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's go. It's unanimous, and that was it for on to for tonight, right? Two cool. more nights. All right. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. All right. Um, next, set, set the. Set, set the date for um, set the date for the next transfer station public forum in August or September. Yeah, and I was thinking Jan, I mean, might be here for this to. to set a date. Well, if you, you know, she could, she could if email a preference her, if you wanted her to be there. But anyway. Oh no! Like right now, tonight to help us set a date. Yeah. I'm going to suggest September because I just feel like people aren't around in August. Yeah. And yeah, that's closer to the actual date. That's kind of what I was thinking is wait, and, yeah, wait until they get. Um, yeah. Just not the first one, please. No. <laughs> I mean, like middle of September. Yeah. Like what about like the 13th or the 14th? That works. We, we did like Thursday nights before, right? Mm -hmm. right no. Thursday nights good because there's hardly any committee meetings Thursday nights. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so it's the 14th. I think it was on uh, September, Thursday. Um, yes, the 14th. Let me just make sure that that's not a, if we're doing it here, that that's not a planning board night. I'm trying to remember. Con uh, comes on Tuesdays. I'm pretty sure planning board's on Thursdays. That first dip, so we can, we can bounce okay. them across yeah, the okay. street. All right, so it's planning, it's sorry, it's um, September 13th, you said? 14th, 14th. 14th. Thursday. The only thing showing Six. is the Council of Aging lunch on that date. 6.30, 6 o'clock. What, what time did we do it last time? That's 6 o'clock. 6, Six. Yeah, that's, that's good. 6 o'clock, okay. Perfect. And on that note, just to let you know, I, I didn't put it in my 
update, but it applies. Um, I'm working on a script that Jonathan and I will be working on trying to explain the new program to people. So hopefully we'll have that buttoned up by then and I'll be forwarding the script to you guys for approval. Yeah, three months. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping to do it in July. Yeah. Very short and sweet. All right, we don't need to do a formal motion for that, do we? Mm -mm. No. no. All right. No. Set the date for special town meeting in December. Veronique, you have some thoughts on this and you have spoken with our moderator about it already. So what's the word? Um, Saturday, December 9th. Well, it would either be the 2nd, the 9th, or the 16th. So. That sounds fine to me. Um, we'll be doing 10 o'clock again. You guys. We have the ability to change it because we changed the bylaw to just be the Saturday. No, actually, this one doesn't count. Yeah, special. We, we can do this this doesn't even have to be Saturday, actually. Right. Um, well, the school is in session, so like, if it's not a weekend, yeah. that would be a problem, but um, potentially. Potentially. It would have, that's why. And that's why in the past those meetings have been at 7.30 at night yeah. when they've been on school night. That's to give the custodial staff the chance mm -hmm. to set up mm -hmm. um, after a school day. Um, I was told there would be resistant if we were going to go back to a weeknight, that like there'd be like real resistance to having it at like 6 o'clock because for that very reason it's just not enough time. Right, because I was going to say we could combine the 6 p.m. slide board meeting on the 4th. Or on the 11th with a special town meeting, but not if it's going to inconvenience. I'd be fine with that. We'll see. Right. So we're not setting it tonight. We're, I mean, we're doing the, yeah, we're, we're setting the special town meeting date for the, oh, all right. Yeah, so, no. well, I mean, that's what we're talking about. So we could either do it like Saturday morning or we could do it like on a Monday night when we normally would have a select board meeting and just. You know, do like 6.30 on a Monday night. Let's do that because people kept saying it's not take away weekends. <laughs> and it's probably not going to be, I mean, you never know, but <laughs> last special town meeting in December was not, it was like an hour and a half, I think. Yeah. I had a clock on it. So that was the goal. And actually, <laughs> Jimmy and I were talking about it afterwards. We both said like two and a half was the goal and we hit it like right on the number. Um, well, do we want to check with school staff first and find out if we could do? Yeah, it's, like, it's a problem for them. It, babysitting is a problem. Um, and the custodial staff it, it, like, doesn't want it earlier than 7.30 if we do do it on a weeknight. But babysitting would still be unavailable because the teachers want to be at work at 8 in the morning. It just doesn't, they can't do that. And, we did have 21 kids yeah, dropped off at babysitting yeah. for a town meeting, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know. <clears throat> Unless we can solve the babysitting problem. Well, do we want to talk to Kristen first, maybe, and see if that's... I, well, yeah, I, I think she said it's not available on a weeknight. Yeah, so... And, and just, you know, as since the, the non-binding resolution ballot did go in favor of Saturday, even if by a minority, yeah. I would suggest that we stick with it, especially since we didn't get the moderators available on the 9th. Oh wait, so do we, so we know that that's the date that Jimmy's available? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah because I had to check ahead just to make sure that that was okay. Because we know it has to be in December. All right, let's that's do the like, night. That's like the high, that's like the height of Montana elk season or something. <laughs> and, um, I wish that is what drove my calendar. <laughs> Seriously. So the ninth at ten AM? We the time we can decide whatever. Yeah. It, can, it doesn't have to be. It, it, there's no school items on it, so there's no like how about not, how about we do one PM then then people can't complain there's no lunch. Mm. And we'll be out before dinner. Yeah, that's I like that idea.
Hurrah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> 12, 9, 1 p.m. Okay. Great. Perfect. All right. So Jan's on. Yep. So I don't know if she, mm -hmm. if she, uh, you hear us, Jan? I can. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Um, we set the, we already set the date for the transfer station public forum. The, the next one. And that is. September 14th at 6 p.m. September 14th at 6 p.m., a Thursday night. Okay. Um, you, of course, are not required to attend, but, um, but you know, on account of you're not a town employee, so we can't require you to do anything. But No, 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 I'll be there. That's fine. Right. And, the, and the goal is to have the program start the week of October 2nd or 1st? 7th. Seventh, because seven, um, the first okay, first Saturday. Yeah, because October first, it's going to be closed because it's the Festival of the Hills here, which is the big, our big celebration of all right. things Conway. Right. Um. Okay. Well, so, I will plan to attend and all right. and do a little can help yeah. put together a little presentation. Okay, but before you go. Um, yes. We we're setting the price for mattresses. Based right. On, yeah. Uh, based on the new contract, and as someone who has just acquired a new mattress, um, and uh, my of the ownership of which is uncertain as to length. Um, I don't know. I like not paying fifty dollars to get rid of it, but I. Right. Uh, I. Why is it so much? Yeah, why is it so much? Yeah, well, so it's a good it's a good question, and I'm glad you folks um, brought it up. Um, the new contract, I just renewed our contract with waste management, or extended it for another two years, and that's the price. That's the current price. Fifty dollars is what the solid waste district is paying um, right now for mattresses. We're not we haven't been passing that on to the towns, um, but that's going to be the price that the towns that we'll see on the bills again in July. What I'm what I would recommend is um, and and kind of I would recommend is keeping the price at thirty five um, because that fifty dollars is only for uh, mattresses that end up in your bulky box. And I, I just quickly I just got home just before I signed in and um, you've had two mattresses go for disposal since December. Between December and May, two mattresses in the in the bulky waste box. So that means you'd be out 30 bucks. Um, you know, if you charge residents 35 and you had to pay 50, it'd be 30 bucks. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm hoping or, or planning to talk to all of the, the recycling site, mattress recycling sites to keep their price at 35 um, and get towns to just kind of level fund it another year. 50, for a resident to pay 50 bucks, it's, it's, a, big, it's a big leap. I think, and um, you know me, I'm not, I'm not a big like oh illegal dumping, but I think at fifty bucks, if somebody had a mattress and a box spring, yeah. it might be you might end up picking it up and finding it somewhere. So, so yeah. that would be my recommendation. You can you can charge fifty dollars if you'd like, but I I think I'm going to be asking, or I will be asking all the towns to keep their pricing at thirty five, right. um, at least for another year, cool. and you know see how we go. Any questions about that? I'm, I'm kind of, I think that's good advice. Yeah. <laughs> it helps you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not just that, but of all the things that do get thrown out roadside, like few things are as visible and as unsightly as the mattress. Like, Absolutely. And, and as gross. Yeah, and as gross. Yeah, because. <laughs> And once yeah. it starts raining on those things, it's just awful to lift them out, and they're always like tossed off of a hillside embankment, and it's just brutal. So, um, right. Okay. Well, if you folks are good with it, I think yeah. that would be a, a good way to go. And and okay. it was, I'm glad that you had it on your agenda because, of course, you know, I'm just going about my day, but um, it was a prompt for me to reach out to all of the towns. Good. Not everybody reads their MOU. Most towns just sign it, and they don't really know this <laughs> set. So. I give you folks credit for actually noticing the price. Um, Thank you. I've gone Thank up. you. We try. We try. Yeah, no, it's great. I love people who pay attention. I send so many things out. It's so nice that somebody's actually reading them. Cool. Cool. 
All right, do we need to make a move? It's, we're, no, no, we're keeping, no, it, we're keeping it the same. Keeping the so same. We, we get to do nothing. That's, 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 that's like one of my specialties in life. <laughs> <laughs> so, very good. <laughs> very good. And, uh, okay. All right, cool. Thank you, Jan. Thanks, Jan. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Yeah, and Veronique and I are working on the sticker, and I'm hoping to have the design. Uh, uh, anyways, I'm yeah. hoping to have something finalized for you folks to really give the okay before it gets printed. So. Yeah. That I didn't bring that back up again about Jan had mentioned, I think I, I forwarded to you the email from the gentleman who makes the stickers, because yeah. it's gone back and forth, and his concern was just it wouldn't stay on, right? That if you wrap it around the handle. So my compromise was gonna be maybe to suggest we recommend rather than dictating. I, I don't know. I don't know if that works, Jan, for you, if we just say, this is the recommended placement of the bag sticker around the, handled the bag. I think we should just recommend, I mean, that's just really nitpicky to be like, oh, your sticker's not in the right place. I mean, as long as the transfer station attendants can see it. Um. Yeah, the concern, um, well, there's a couple of things. One is I have a nice image from all of the other town tr stickers of the, of the sticker wrapped around the um, neck of the bag. So you saw something I kind of cobbled together and they weren't sure that they could do it. There was going to be an extra charge, and um, I'm not sure how the bag would print. But the other, the the, uh, the vendor um, who works with a lot of towns said he wasn't sure on a cold day, like you know, 20 degrees, 10 degrees day, that the sticker would actually stay on the side of the bag if it was not super flat. So like, if the bag was bulky or had bulky things in it, then the sticker might pop off. And I hadn't thought about that. So. You know, it's really, it's your program and, and I can get, I can have an artist um, through the company kind of design something a little bit nicer to put it on the side of the bag, but um, the standard, all of, most towns that have it wrapped around the neck, just because then it sticks together, the two sticky ends, it's like if you check your own bags at Southwest, you know, you put your, put the sticky ends together on your, on the label on your suitcase and then you know it stays better, so. So then, Jan, if the select board decided to say recommend, you could still use the artwork you had before, right? Because it's showing a picture of it around the neck. And rather than saying, the board saying you have to do it this way, if you say you recommend it, it shows a picture of what it would look like, did, would that solve it? Sure, if you think you can get that message out to people. I mean, the, the, I think the, the, sticker, the sticker probably says, you know, it must be around the neck. So, so there's a little bit of a, there'll be a mixed message. Um, I'm really okay getting an, a, a better, getting an artist to actually draw, like sketch the bag and put the label on the side. So I know, I know you already decided and then mm. I went ahead with that decision. And then when, when I got the information from the, from the sticker guy, I was like, uh Oh, I don't just don't want there to be you know, a February day where somebody shows up and they say, I put a sticker on in my garage and then they get there and there's no sticker and these are just the headaches, you know, so. so right, but on the mock-up, oh, sorry, on, on the mock-up, we didn't say must be around. As a matter of fact, we took that language off. So couldn't we add in recommended to be placed like around sure. other place? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm on my, I'm on my personal computer, so I don't know what the sticker looks like, but sure. Yeah, why don't I why don't I look at that tomorrow and I'll send something so I, around. I, the, the, I I guess when when I first saw the design like a, cause we only did we did one field trip to Charlemont and Charlemont had like a big sticker and it was on the sides of bags and um and but then I found out that that's a lot more expensive than our sticker so like I I'm okay with less expensive smaller sticker but um but. <laughs> But when, so that was like one thing. So so like, um, and and the fellow there that you know you know Charlemagne is cold, um, like too <laughs> just like here, and the, he never said anything about stickers falling off. But um, but the 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 other thing was you know when I talked to the transfer station guys about it, their big thing was like visibility that that uh, because especially like when there's 10 cars lined up they want to keep it moving keep it moving keep it moving and if they have to stop it to say i can't see your sticker show me the sticker like just that little thing like keeps the line right. from moving and so 
Um, so, so they thought they thought that like that, or the two guys that I was talking to at the time that thought that the side of the bag would be more visible from a, a distance, especially if they're like three cars down the line helping somebody, that it would be more visible to them, um, whatever. And they also thought yeah. they also thought that if it's tied around the the top, that it's too easy for people to. Um, like use half a sticker and just tie it and from a distance you wouldn't be able to tell and they thought that that would be a like a uh, something that some people in town would take advantage of but I, I mean I, I like there, there's so many there's so many ways to gain this stuff that if people want to steal from right. you they're gonna like but right um, yeah they're only seven inches long so it would be a very I'm not sure I mean they would have to have a very empty bag right so the trade-off would be they'd have to put less in their trash bag to use a piece of a sticker um you know i mean there's no perfect solution right so somebody could have the sticker on the back side of the bag and they would still have to say can you turn your bag around so i can see your sticker so there's there's nothing perfect um i just i know and i don't remember charlie does charlie have a square sticker or like a, yeah. a large yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like rectangular, I thought, but it was kind of... Yeah, rectangular sticker. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think Shelburne has the same thing. Yeah. yeah, so it's really up to you. I'm just, I just wanted to pass on what he said because I feel like he must have had experience with that. And, you know, so, I just don't want you, I just yeah. don't want to go down the road what, and then have what, any problem what where you have... What is the price? You know, 100,000 stickers or something yeah. and you're like, oh no. So can I just ask, what is the price difference between that rectangle and what we're... What, and what we're I, considering. I don't know. I've, I've never ordered the size. The, so yeah. I would assume it's like four times the cost. That was kind of my, that's what, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but that was, the, I mean, it was pretty large. Right. The thing about the sticker we have is I had the assumption the whole thing was a sticker, but it's not. It's kind of like when you get a, a baggage at an airport where it's oh, only so a exactly. third of it's sticky. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to wrap it around. Oh, I see. Okay. So you can't just slap it on the side of the bag, and that's why I want to do is. Which is, you know, we won't have like a Seinfeld, like cheap adhesive, like licking the envelope oh, yeah, death, yeah. like that, yeah. that way, at our, <laughs> on our conscious. So, yeah. Um. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think around the neck is more foolproof than on the side because it is really easy for people to say, it was on the bag when I left my house, you know, or maybe it, maybe it, it unstuck and it's on their truck or it blew away or something, you know, but when it's around the neck and it's stuck together, it's pretty hard to lose it. It's pretty hard for it to come off. It's nearly impossible. So, can you get one of those around the neck of a contractor bag? I mean, I guess if it's seven, seven inches, inches, yeah, yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I, I would prefer to go with recommended because I feel like moving to a sticker is like a big enough change. And if we get really <laughs> picky with people, like, oh, you put your sticker on the wrong part of the bag, like you lost a sticker. I just you know, so I prefer recommended personally. Okay. All right. Okay, I know. No more talk about stickers. All right, I'll, I'll, work, I'll work something up and make sure the language says, yeah. doesn't say anything it, about you must under the penalty of death. Yeah. Right, right. Apply your it, sticker appropriately. It is amazing how far down into the weeds we get with all this stuff for the transfer station. I never. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. Thank, thank you, Jen. Jen. All right, good night. All right, good night. Members. Vote to approve three members of the sustainable sustainability committee, a brand new committee. Jody Lally, John Major Ma Meyer check. Meyer check, yes, yes. And Beth Gerstman. For terms ending 63024, 63025, and 63026, respectively. Um, I move that we make those appointments. And hereby create a new sustainability committee. Um, we already we, created. Yes, we did. Uh, now, yeah. But, now I finally found the people. <laughs> and, At least three of them. And uh, I'll just say, if Beth is involved, I'm all for it. So. Same here. I'll second Erica's motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, the FERCOG representative, we are tabling that? We're what? tabling that only because I, I still need to get the list from them and just make sure we're all on the same page about all the different appointments we need. So Because I know you forgot one on the town report. 
Yeah. Me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. me. And Erica is the alternate. Like, that was. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. So, we're going to get our ducks in a row with all the. <laughs> all right. So, put that on for next week. Two weeks. Um, so, uh, appoint Louise Beckett to the Conservation Commission for a term ending 6 30 26. Um, we all know Louise. She's awesome. And they're lucky to have her. Yeah. Glad she's willing to serve. Yep. So. Uh, I move that we appoint Louise to the Conservation Commission. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And um, select board reorganization following the most recent town election. Here's where we congratulate Erica for her dominant victory yeah. at the polls. 100%. Like, <laughs> crushing. Wow, I did not even campaign. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, and, the, you know, there is some dispute. In, we, we've never, we, the fiscal year begins July 1st, but the election is before the fiscal year, so there's, it's still sort of a gray area about, um, that like the difference but like Lori got back to me on that oh okay yeah and so it is the day after the election mm. all right that the members are yeah oh. and this is when traditionally if we wanted to elect a new chair of the select board we would do so but we don't have to that's my understanding um yeah. You don't have to. We, yeah, we you do need to. We have to elect. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then I make a motion that we continue with Phil Cantor as chair of the select board because he's been doing a bang up job so far. Bless you. <laughs> Thunder a second. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and uh, vice chair. Do we have a vice chair? You haven't. Can it's we a good name? Idea. Can we name yeah. the vice chair the minister of vice instead of vice chair? <laughs> well, then um, I'd be willing to serve. There you go. Okay, <laughs> I'll nominate Erica as minister of vice. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, do we have a title? Can we get? Can we make a title for Chris? Well, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we had a we had a clerk at one point. Um, uh, select board clerk. Yes. Which I but but I don't, but it's. But that's before. Yeah, that's it, true. Yeah, that okay. would be basically turned into the town administrator. And the okay, assistant. so that was. So I, 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 I don't think you need a clerk. That, I swear to God, like Bob Armstrong was clerk. I've seen for the past minutes. That's okay. I don't, we don't need I'll just continue to be <laughs> who? <laughs> uh, cool. Perfect. All right. Okay. Awesome. Um. Honorable Chair and Madam Vice Chair. Yeah. <laughs> And um, just just to, uh, along those lines, it, uh, I know I've talked about this before, but for 240 something years, we always did like whoever was in their third year was the select board chair unless they didn't want to do it. So um, next year, it would be Chris's third year. And I would have it. This is my second. This is, this your is second my second year. year. Yes. You had a really terrific first year. You're under no obligation. Like, <laughs> you, you would be no under no obligation, but yeah. um, but uh, you know that that's a good thing to get back into, in my opinion. Um, just like long term, like attracting people to the select board and all that. So sure, um, we can discuss that next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you know. How meaty was such a blast this year? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So, so items not anticipated 48 hours. Anybody? Town administrator update? I read it, it looked good. Thank you. <laughs> I know, but, but, but people at home haven't read it, so can you give us a, a highlight, a highlight reel? The Reader's Digest Condensed uh, Version oh, Highlight Reel. The one I was taking. Well, for me, the highlight was actually going to the small town administrators annual meeting. They really had a heavy hitting list of, of speakers there. We got to meet the new state auditor. Um, we met the inspector general. I got to meet Ann Gobi, um, our new director of rural affairs. Um, it, and we got an assessing 101 class. It was really quite, actually we went through the entire meeting. We didn't even get any breaks because things just kind of went a little longer than it was. It was really good. It was really good. Um, so there's that, um, and 
one of the things that I found really interesting um, was the discussion on pilot, because of course that will really affect Conway, the payment in lieu of taxes for state owned land. Mm -hmm. And they are rediscussing, or they're discussing reworking some of these formulas that will be much more favorable to towns like Conway that have more state owned land. So Thanks. that and also rethinking um, chapter 90, you know, they have the RAP program that was really based on road miles instead of this convoluted formula they have for it now. So if they continue either with RAP or with changing that, for, you know, so it's things like that that are all the priorities that they've been working on for years. And it's kind of exciting that it's finally kind of made it up to um, the Economic Development Office is actually where they placed um, mm -hmm. Director Gobi. So I thought that was actually kind of a neat place to to have her. Um, we are going to um, have postings for the sealed bid for the land at zero off Ashfield Road, which is landlocked. It'll be in the Conway Currents in the Greenfield Recorder. I hope to have it for the Recorder for Saturday the 1st, July 1st. And the actual um, bid acceptance itself will be on July 11th at up until 4 p.m. at the town clerk's office. Lori will be taking those. So that's about all I have. Right. Well, um. I'll have my auto responder on that says, I'm on an island. Sorry. <laughs> will you really be on an island? Yeah. <laughs> will you be on an yep. island? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody select board member comments, concerns? Yes. <laughs> so I just, you know, since Devlin didn't join, I just want to get a few things, some questions out of the way, just in case she does email you back, contact you back, just to understand. Pretty sure what she wants to do is just get reimbursed for the amount of how much she had to pay for the public records. She hasn't paid anything. Okay, so I don't understand then. Is she, she going to have to pay anything? Well, so the thing is, it's actually, she did make an appeal. Right. Um, on the 8th, so it's at the state. The state has 10 business days to get back to her, which would be by this Friday. So we really won't know anything until, I mean, I would recommend we wait and see what the state says. Can I ask a question? Sure. I'm looking at the general law for public record request. One of, the, one of it says that, that the, who was ever requesting the records uh, should be given an itemized good faith estimate mm -hmm. of any fees that may be charged. Yes. She would receive that? Correct. Was it close to what the actual fee is? Well, that is what the fee was. So what okay. happened is that I put together the estimate as best I could, and it went to the state, and then it was questioned. And so the state asked me for more clarification, which I gave. Okay. And then it was a little confusing because the state then closed out the case without letting us know that it was closed. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, I made sure that Devlin knew that they had closed out the case because I had to call them up and say, you know. So, so she's not been billed and to our knowledge. Nothing starts until she pays the town the fee. So the record request hasn't even been, okay, she doesn't even have the records until the fee is paid. Absolutely. I cannot start until okay. the check is in the town's hands. So that's what she wants then. She wants mm -hmm. still to have the records, but doesn't want to pay the fee to Correct. obtain the records. Correct. And since she made that appeal to the state, we're waiting for the state Got it. to get back to okay. us. Okay. So that's where it's at. And from the very beginning, you know, my when this first came up, I was like, you know, Ronnie, just follow the law. Right. Because this, and and I'll and I'll be honest, like this is a group, like, and I'm not not Devlin in particular, but that whole group of residents and. Um, there's a lot more than just her, has in the past um, mentioned a desire to potentially hire lawyers and sue the town. And so whenever I hear anything like that, um, like from now on, we dot our I's and we cross our T's and we follow the law. That's so, it. so right now it's already in motion to, um, what do you say this? The, uh, Her appeal is at the state. So okay, so that's already in motion. So we shouldn't do anything until we get. I would back recommend on the state. waiting until the state answers okay. us. And then, so the reason that I don't start anything until the money's been received is because then I track my hours. I have right. to show 
And if the amount of time it takes is less, then clearly she gets a refund. Right. So, and the first two hours are free, by the way. I mean, the, that's the law is that, you know, the first two hours you spend on this. Um, yeah, I read that all. Yeah. So. And, the, and there's a potential that it wouldn't cost, that, that it wouldn't cost what mm -hmm. the estimate is and she'd get a refund. Yeah. It would be a ho it would be a hope I would imagine, um, even maybe even an expectation. But you gotta just sketch it out the way you think it might go down. So, um, and yeah, and the yeah okay. Uh, uh, th so the other the other concern of hers, like that she kept, that she has mentioned in correspondence and at town meeting, was since the town is getting all this revenue, can't the town and. Um, those are just two. The revenue goes to the town general fund, mm -hmm. not to the select board record request fund. Right. Um, and yeah, you know, it, of which there is no fund. That's an imaginary, made-up term that I just came up with. Um, and the the uh, you know, the, it's it's just like when the defense department says we're gonna we want to buy bunch n new nuclear weapons, and everybody says no, let's pay for teachers instead. Um, but they, when they, if they, if they would decide not to buy no nuclear weapons, they just don't spend that money. They don't buy more teachers. They, it's just the same. It's one's got nothing to do with the other. And um, but as tempting as it might be, and the, it, you know, the fact that the town is getting revenue from a facility that is not generating electricity is just due to the smartness of the people working the town end of that contract, that 20 year contract, that's all. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and, and and I, I, I will say that I think the amount, I can understand why it seems really large. Part of the reason is, well, the reason is because of the nature of the request, which goes back five years and encompasses so many different departments. And unfortunately, I'm the only person who can gather it. I mean, other departments will have to get it to me and I'll have to track their time but I'm the only one who can sit there and go through them all, redact them all if necessary, and put them on the USB drive for her, so. Okay, thank you. All right, so I, oh, go, go, go. I, my, I just have an ongoing concern about uh, the lack of a personnel committee, and I don't know that there's anything that we can do about that, but I just would like to voice the fact that I think that we really, really need an active personnel committee. We got one. We just need two. Yeah, more. there's one person who's expressed interest. Okay. Um, yeah. So if anyone out there is watching and you want to serve on the personnel yeah. committee. <laughs> the one that is has expressed an interest would do a great job. Um, so we just need we just need two mediocre ones. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, um, anything else? The, so mail mail is a Comcast letter. Um, they want to be congratulated because they <laughs> reduced their broadcast TV fee by 90 cents, by 90 cents from $27.60 a month to $26.70 a month. So I have to admit, I get these very often with yes. the changes in the fees. That one struck me because it was going down. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that the, the cost in sending these letters out like <laughs> ate up the savings for a full year, but that's okay. Um, yeah. And Next meeting date, July 3rd. Did, did we talk about meeting dates for like the rest of the summer? Like, did we do that last time? You have not that I, but we talked You've talked about vacations, vacations but what yeah. vacations you have. Do we want to, let's, do we want to talk about meeting dates for the we rest of the summer? Actually, yes. Yeah, 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 I was going to say, maybe we did do that already. Because the next one is scheduled for July 3rd. And the four, it's, the, it's a holiday weekend. Yeah. Right, but it's um, a warrant week. It is a warrant week. Um, I will not be here. I will be here, but I will not be here the 10th or the 17th of July. Well, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be one in the 10th, because we're doing every two weeks. Um, but there... And, you know, historically in the summer we have moved dates around. We haven't always kept to Monday nights. Mm -hmm. We've, I mean, we've done it on weekend. We've done it, in, you know, I remember doing one on a Friday morning. Um, which, you know. um, yeah, I, I mean, I can do the third. <coughs> I just, I mean, the 10th and the 17th, I won't be here, so. Um, 
Well, you, I, unless there's some change, you're going to stick with the warrant schedule, no? Right, but I mean, the, 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 you know. But it doesn't have to be it like doesn't, that Monday. It could be. It can be a day after. Oh, whatever. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. That's what like I'm that. saying. It has to be like around that general vicinity because you got to make payroll. But um, like it could be Wednesday the fifth instead of Monday the third. Yeah. That's what we're saying. If you want to do that, I'll be here. <laughs> I'll be here. I mean, so that's fine with me. I just I won't be here the seventeenth that long week. So. Oh, Wednesday the fifth is Ryan's birthday, and I might be in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Um, I'll be bounced. So better I'll come along and <laughs> die for her birthday. Um, um, Thursday the sixth. Uh, I could do that too. You okay with Thursday the sixth? And I will have vacated by then, so oh, I'll be so, fine. Uh, <laughs> so we'll just need to sign. It, it's basically just to sign warrants, right? Unless. I mean, theoretically, there's always something that's going to come up, though. When do you when do you leave? I am. I am gone this Friday through till the fifth. I'll be back on the fifth. So the sixth, he would be here. That's what I'm saying. I said I will have vacated already. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Vacated yeah. means you, uh, you will be, have left. Sorry. Not like. I will be she relaxed. Will have left and come back. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So, so should we say the sixth? So if you want to be Thursday the sixth, then I can do that. At 6 p.m. So our next meeting will be Thursday, July 6th at 6 p.m. in this location. Uh, I'm assuming the other. Is there a planning board? board? Yeah, that's what I was just going to try to look up. Yeah. And it doesn't like to do it on my phone very much. Oh, it always kind of runs away from me. If anybody else gets there quicker, the calendar. Pretty cool the I am. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, it, it always blinks away on my mobile. Board 7 p.m. Oh, great. So we do it at 6? We can probably get out of here. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it'll be a long meeting. All right. All right, great. So Thursday, the, okay. unless you want to do 5.30 just to be safe. That's up to you. If we do one hour, we'll make it one hour. I was going to say. <laughs> 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 Why don't we just do one hour? Yeah, right? okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Actually, if we did it, when we got it in one hour tonight, and there was a lot more, that's good, then we're yeah. going to have to deal with that. All right. Okay. So, so and, you, and after that, you're just assuming you'll stay on the regular two-week warrant schedule unless a holiday comes up or something. I know Erica won't be on the 17th, so there's only one day I won't. One Monday I won't be here. That's the 24th. Okay. All right. All right. So I'll move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> cool.